before we get going, I got some uh, sex offender business to take care of here. I got a couple of these in the mail. Here's here's Margaret right there. Uh, here's Joe. They moved in the neighborhood. These are registered sex offenders. I've had a lot of sex offenders come in for counseling, and I know what's wrong with them. And uh, most of them uh, were abused as kids. Uh, they've all got unclean spirits. They've all got lust demons. They've all got rejection demons. It's the same pattern. Every one of them that I've seen have exactly the same pattern. It's almost cookie cuttered, and uh, they don't know they're they don't know what's wrong with them. And uh, the state and the county they don't know what's wrong with them, so they uh, rightly assume that they can never be healed. And without without deliverance, that's true. The sex offenders can't be healed. They can't be cured. They're like alcoholics once you're an alcoholic you're always an alcoholic unless you go through deliverance and get that spirit out of there that craves the alcoholism you'll always be an alcoholic you'll, you'll never be cured that's how that works I hope that's not a surprise to you <laughs> Ugh. so anyway let's pray for these two right here Lord I got a couple of listing of sex offenders by faith, I just want both them sex offenders right down here some night at this altar. And I lift them up to you, and I'm going to ask you to heal them and deliver them and give them uh, a new start in life. A start they never had when they were children and never had as an adult. And I believe you'll do it, Lord. Uh, we, don't, we don't hate these people at all. You love them, and uh, you want to help them. Amen. All right. Hope you signed up for the, we'll be here for the seminar on Lucifer. He's coming up next. Remember the radio programs are on every day of the week now. I'm also on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. You can catch them off the website here on Omni.fm. It's right on the front page of the website anytime you want to. If you want to help us out with uh, some donations, but you don't have any money. Most of the people that come here don't have any money. And they don't don't they don't donate anything to the ministry. Most of the people are coming. Hey, that's fine. You know, I work my fingers to the bone, not for money, but for people. So whether they have any money or not is, is immaterial to me, and immaterial to God. But we got a lot of faithful people outside of the ministry that don't even come here that send us money, and they see what we're doing. They appreciate the type of ministry this is, a kind of a rejected ministry, but. A necessary one, so they send us donations. We pay the bills every month. I've never been late on a payment on anything. Hundred percent, every bill always gets paid. No amens tonight, so it's going to be a heathen evening. But those of you who don't have any money, and there's probably a lot of you here. Uh, you can switch over from Google to Good Search and put in Hardcore Christianity, and they will donate to us when you. Surf the web. You can do the same thing on Amazon. All you have to do is go to smileamazon.com when you're going to go buy something. You put in our charity name and they donate something like 1% or something like that of whatever you purchase to the ministry. It won't cost you a penny. We now have five YouTube channels. Tonight's teaching is on channel number two, House of Healing AZ. Thursday nights is on channel number five, a Thursday night prayer session. There's the list again. I send those out every week. I get questions. I mean, it's every single day I get emails on these lists. Most of them are bad. Oh, my God, I can't do it. It's, it's too much. It's too much. Just, look, just calm yourself down. Just take it one step at a time. Take it slowly. Just do number one first. Okay? Stay on number one for however many days you need to stay on it until you've finished successfully number one. You can't do it on your own. The Holy Ghost will help you. He has to help you. We can't do any of this stuff on our own. I can't do anything on my own either. If left to myself, hey, I, I suck. I heard several in, in your heads. I heard several amens on that. <laughs> Listen, just stay on number one and push your way through it. Don't try to do the whole thing at once. It'll overwhelm you. It does work. Go to number three. Go to the website and look at the testimonials. Lots of people healed off these groups. 
Okay, I got an email this week again. Somebody opened up a terror cell in their church. So I'm very proud of that. Two or three people in your church can start picking off the sick people, paying the devil back for the rotten life he gave you before you got saved, and for all the pain he's caused you after you got saved. In some cases, your life really goes bad after you get saved. When you're not saved, you're already in the bag. When you get saved, you then become a threat. So many people testified that their life got worse after they got saved. You got to renew your mind. You got to learn spiritual warfare. You must become a worshiper. You must become a Bible study student. And you will win. Okay, our donation boxes are on the doors there. And thank you for donating before you leave. You can also donate off the website. Thank you for that. I'll see you in Huntsville, Alabama next month. For two services. That's the uh, aerospace capital of the country, supposedly. The United States is build, building supersonic air jets now. Did you see that on the news? Supersonic. China has them, Russia has them. So now everybody's going to be killing each other. Nobody's going to see any of them coming. And we're, they're now building them in Huntsville. There you go, supersonic jets in Huntsville. I'll see you in Casa Grande in May. You know anybody in Casa Grande? We don't associate with Casa Grande. All right, that's fine. No problem. All right. Tonight I need to reveal you some deep, dark secrets of the spirit world. I want to show you how and why the gospel uh, doesn't work, but I'm going to give you the keys to how it works. Actually seeing it works. I know that sounds crazy, but generally speaking, Christianity doesn't work in this country. It's a pitiful religion. But if you get the key, the right key, see, if you go to Walmart and you get a key made, <laughs> then you run about a 50-50 chance that thing's going to work. You know, <laughs> But uh, the chances now of getting a good key are better because at Home Depot now, they have key machines. Okay, you can have somebody who's a drooling vegetable walk up to that thing, and all you got to do is put the key in there, and the machine does the whole thing. Have you seen that? It's amazing. Uh, we're slowly, as society progresses, running out of the need for humans. But the keys work better, so that's okay. Well, if you don't have the right key, Exactly right. If it's not exactly like the other, there's going to be a catch there, and that door is not going to open. Now, that's frustrating. You ever done that before? Oh, I tell you what, that's frustrating. You go to Home Depot; it's never right next door. You got to drive yonder to get there. You go in there, you get that key made, then you drive home. You're expecting that key to work. You need it to work. You're on a timeline. And it catches. <laughs> oh, yes. If you have something manifest at that time, that's a blessing from God. Now you know there's something in there that needs to come out, and God was using a Home Depot key to reveal it to you. Uh huh. Why those mother, as soon as you hear that feeling, get back down here. Praise God for Home Depot. The key's got to work. And it clicks when it works and it just opens. It so feels so good when the key works. When I was living in Santa, I used to call them junk a lot. And get fumbled. You know, you weren't sure. That's frustrating. Now when you come home sober every night and just pick the key on fire and know which one it is. I put it in, click. That sucker works. I just open the door. I walk right in. I walk right in like I own the place. I do own the place in my home. But it feels so good when a key works right. And it's so frustrating when the gospel doesn't work right. And you don't know why it doesn't work. It's so frustrating. God and Jesus and the gospel are so frustrating. 
when it doesn't work right. I didn't expect any amens on that. Let's check it out and see how the gospel does work. Naaman. Now this guy could have fit right in perfectly 21st century Christianity here in the United States. His name means pleasant delight. Wow, this Naaman was a great person. First Kings chapter 5. Here it comes. Second Kings, excuse me. Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable. And by him, the Lord had given deliverance to Syria during the Syria Assyrian War. Syria used to be a divided country. North, South Korea, Assyrians, Syria. They used to fight all the time. East Germany, West Germany, fight all the time. Anytime you got a split, Hatfields, McCoy, fight all the time. Anytime you got a split in the country, they fight all the time. Fighting all the time. Well, Jehovah had used Naaman to stomp on the Assyrians and bring judgment to them. And he was a mighty man of God. This guy was a big deal. He was a celebrity. But he had leprosy. There are only 10 cases of leprosy in the Bible. Here they are. Thought I would list them for you, YouTubers. Here's the first five. You remember this one, Miriam. She got leprosy from judgment. Moses got it from the illustration. Remember that? Naaman got it. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Gehazi got it from sin. The four lepers starving to death. They decided to go into town. Plenty to eat. Remember that story? These are great stories. King Uzziah, he was a leper. Jesus healed a leper in Matthew 8. Boy, that was a great story. I use that one all the time. It's fantastic. It's off the hook great. Simon the leper is mentioned in the Bible, Matthew 26. And the 10 lepers. Yeah, 10 lepers got healed, but only one leper was made whole. That's a great Bible study there. It's a beautiful story. Fantastic. All right. 2 Kings chapter 5. The Syrians had gone out by companies and brought captive out of the land of Israel. A nara'ah. In Hebrew, that is a young girl, probably grade schooler, right? So, my con con country went into your country. We took your country over. We took the spoils. That included the people. We took out the hot babes. We took the healthy men. We took the healthy girls. We took whatever we wanted. We bring them back to our country. We use you. You're our slaves. Well, this young maid was Damon's. Wife's slave, so she was her attendant, so to speak. And she she saw that uh, Naaman had leprosy. Apparently, it was a bad case of it. Leprosy is really ugly. Your skin would turn white. In the final stages of it, your digits would fall off. Your toes fell off. This would fall off. Your chunks of skin would drop off. You just started to die. It was like somebody was burying you while you were still alive. Well, this guy's leprosy was probably not there yet, but it was getting close. And so this little girl goes to his wife and, he's, and she says, hey, there's a prophet in Israel. And if you send him over there, he can get healed. He'll get healed. Jehovah can do anything. Jehovah's, Jehovah's off the hook. He's much greater than your God's. You know, sometimes out of the mouth of babes is where you get the truth. You see, when, once you get too much education and you get too much of an adult in you, you don't think straight anymore. Sometimes it takes a kid to come in and straighten the adults out. Well, this kid here straightening them out. And the king said, he goes to the king of Syria and he goes, hey, that sounds great. Go ahead and go to Israel. And listen, I think they're going to get him. Send them a thank you. So the king of Syria, who's a total heathen, has more common sense than a born-again, spirit-filled Christian in 21st century America. He's an unsaved sinner, and he sends a thank you for his servant's healing before he's healed. Holy smoke. What a disgrace Christianity is in America. Christians here got to see it, and if they don't see it now, they're not going to believe it. King of Syria is not even saved. He's chock full of demons. He says, listen, that's a great idea. Prophet, yeah. Send him this. Send him a truckload of money. Because that's what everybody wants and that's what everybody 
wants today the love of money is the king of the gods it's what Moloch means in the Old Testament the king of the gods in our society Moloch is money by far the king of the gods well he sends ten talents of silver six thousand pieces of gold ten changes of uh, nice clothing whatever that was but check this out oh shoot I'm not sure you can see that but anyway uh, uh, here's the coins right here here and here check what's counts okay what this was was if what this guy sent was 3,000 shekels made up a talent so 3,000 of these coins times 10 was about a hundred pounds and then he sent 6,000 of these coins here so that's that's going to be another two or three or four big bags of these coins and these had to be hauled over there by mule and it was a long ride to cross the Jordan into Israel from Syria so this was a major event and this guy sent them a small fortune this was big money back then it was like very similar to us being on a TV show called wheel of fortune you ever seen that show what's well, a show that uh, three saps or three people stand in this section here and then they spin this wheel and then they try to figure out uh, letters in these words and uh, the guy that runs the show I forgot his name what's that guy's name is Pat Sajak yeah I was I was channel surfing the other day I saw Pat Sajak down there and I I felt they're so bad for him yeah, have you ever seen Pat Sajak he looks like somebody dug him up. He's done that show so many times now. He comes out like a zombie. <laughs> and he can't stand being on that show. And he can't stand looking at these people standing there. They're happy. Oh, they're excited. See? And before the show, the, the production crew explains to them, listen, you have to be happy to be on the show. And you have to act happy. And here's what you do. Here's how you look. And here's where you clap. And here's where you get her done. And they train them to go on these shows. These things are all staged, okay? And uh, Pat said, but they can't stage Pat Sajak anymore. Uh -uh, no, he just he staggers out there like he's got Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, and it gets down to the end. And then the, then the, the the guy takes a guess, you know, uh, uh, having fun with Pokemon. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. It's Pokemon. You lost. <laughs> and Pat Jajak's face sinks down here. The guys stand there going. <laughs> then the other lady spins and it lands on this black one called Bankrupt. Her face sinks. I mean, that's the Wheel of Fortune, most depressing thing you've ever seen. <laughs> but it's all about money, and that's why people watch it. And that's all. Life is all about money. Here it is. He sends this fortune to thank you for healing my servant. Well, guess what? He sent this letter to the king of Israel, and he says, "Hey, here's a bunch of money for you. Thank you for helping us heal my warrior Naaman, who's famous. This guy's famous. He needs to be healed of leprosy." So the king of Israel freaks, okay, and he suddenly becomes a 21st century American Christian. He starts receiving a series of negative thoughts into his mind, which is what Christians do all the time. A negative start, thoughts start popping into his head. Wait a minute here. What, does, who does this guy think I am? God? Can I cure leprosy? What are you, nuts? Wait a minute. Uh, this guy's up to something. He sent me this money. Uh, if I can't cure him of leprosy, oh, he's going to use that as an excuse for something. He's sending this money for show. He's being bombarded like Christians are with chronic negative thoughts that they do not take captive to the obedience of Christ. And these thoughts start pouring in at the moment of trials or temptations. As soon as the trial or temptation hits, the devil then starts pumping in negative thoughts 
oh my god here we go again oh no i'm gonna go down again oh we're screwed this is gonna go bad that's gonna go bad oh this can't happen oh that won't happen and a click 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 like a speed bag the christian then rumbles through their normal routine negativity 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 instead of obeying the word of the lord and taking every thought captive these negative thoughts starts to run loose in the Christian mind. Then the Christian starts to have negative emotions that come right up after the negative thoughts. They all work together. The devil's smart. If he can give you a negative emotion, the negative thoughts seem real and they seem true. So he simply beats Christians like they're drums. He says, oh my God, can I cure leprosy? He's trying to start a fight. He's trying to start a fight. Everything the king of Israel was thinking was wrong. None of it was true. He starts panicking. Well, guess what? The man of God hears about this. Elisha, the prophet, heard about what happened. And he says, why are you panicking? Why are you falling apart? Don't worry about this. I got this thing covered. Let him come to me, and he will know that there is a true prophet in Israel. That is exactly what happens to every born-again Christian. It's routine. It happens numerous times per day. The devil hits you with something negative. Somebody says something stupid. Somebody does something stupid. Somebody acts like a fool. And the devil then jumps on you. They're acting a fool, and then the devil jumps on you. And he starts putting these negative thoughts in your mind. This won't go right. That won't go right. We're in trouble. That's not going to work. This isn't going to work. Holy crap. This and that. Then you start getting negative emotions on top of it. Oh, geez, that hurts. Oh, my God. Now I'm scared. Now I feel alone. Now I'm panicking. And you have a panic attack. That's what happens during panic attacks. Negative thoughts come in, and then a panic attack follows it. <gasps> oh, my God. I'm in trouble. Well, the king started having a panic attack because he didn't want to go to war with Syria because he knew they were going to get their faces kicked in. Hurt me with a guy naming around. They sent me naming. Oh, this is a trick. He's an infiltrator. See, as long as you keep receiving a negative thought, the devil will keep pumping another negative thought in your mind. As long as you keep receiving one, he will never stop with one. He will not do that. He will always come in with two. Once you receive two, he will come in with a third one. If you keep receiving them, he will keep pouring them in. It is relentless. Relentless. Naaman's a plant. Oh, my God, this great warrior has come over here. They're trying. They know I can't heal him of leprosy. This is a setup. Look, they brought the money just to show they were sincere. And then they're going to take an affront when I tell them I can't heal them. Oh, you refused our request. All these thoughts coming in. Chronic negativity coming into your mind continuously. That's why your Christian life sucks. That's why you can't get anywhere spiritually because you're entertaining too many negative thoughts in your mind, not taking them captive to the obedience of Christ. Elijah comes along and doesn't have that negativity problem. He says, hey, chilling. The Holy Ghost on top of this thing. Tell him to come talk to me. Relax. When you got the Holy Ghost and you don't have negative thoughts, you're chilling. You know what they call it? Faith. When you have faith, you're chilling. This thing's covered. It's all good. Yeah, I got the doctor's report. That's temporary. I got your report. You're temporary. I'm fine. <laughs> See, that's faith. But when the negative thoughts start coming in, click, 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 click. All the negative emotions rise. Boom, 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 boom. Oh my God. Bang. Back to sin, back to drugs, back to alcohol, back to failure, back to suicide, back to running. Folks, this isn't NASA. Uh, they don't they don't go through this stuff in Huntsville. They work on supersonic jets there. This is spiritual truth. And they're actually very simple if you stop and think about them. Naaman gets on his horse. He brings all the money. He's got the mules. He's got his servants. He's got everybody. It's a caravan. See? It's kind of like Hillsong at a women's conference. You know, you got the naked cowboy up there. What's up, gals? Partying at Hillsong. 
Nathan goes on in. Wow. Pump and pageantry. That's what Nathan's used to. Naaman loves pump because that's what they do in Syria. When he mocked up the Assyrians, my God, they had a pray you wouldn't even believe. You win the NBA title, you win the Super Bowl, you win this, you win that. You know what they have? A parade in your hometown. They have a big old parade. And they run down the street celebrating all your great accomplishments. That's what happens. It's human nature. Well, he's doing it here. Let's bring the entourage down to Elisha's hut. He's standing outside the door and he's expecting, you know how we do it in Syria. We have these big ceremonies. That's what they do in Washington. They have a big old ceremony. Every month there's a big ceremony in Washington. There's the Christmas lighting of the Christmas tree. National Christmas tree. Oh, that's great. There's National Memorial. Big ceremony. There's uh, Election Day. A big ceremony. Big ceremony. Oh, nothing's changed. Humans don't change. All humans are the same. 3,000 years ago, they're humans. 3,000 years later, they're humans. We all do the same crap over and over again. We don't change. Oh, no. We don't change. Everybody's married said amen. And so, they're standing out in front of Elijah's hut. And he's expecting Elijah to come out because the gods of Syria, they like a lot of pomp and pageantry. It's a big celebration in Syria. This person celebrates those gods, them celebrating them gods. Same thing in India right now. Oh, big deal. Everybody's got their own god. Everybody's got their own celebration of their own god. Oh, it's a party. It's a party. They got annual celebrations. Israel, same thing. They had different feasts. Got a feast for this, got a feast for that. Feast, feast uh, here, feast uh, here. Everybody's got a big celebration. Everybody makes a big deal out of it. So what's going to happen? Obviously, Elisha's going to come out of his hut. Come on out, dude. He's going to come out with a band. Hill songs there. The Mars Hill people are there. Oh, the choir comes both bubbling out. The naked cowboys. Are. They're all there. They're all there. It's all good. And the door creaks open. And out comes a houseboy. Naaman's going, hmm. What in God's name is going on here? The houseboy walks up to him and says, hey. Hi. <laughs> Elisha's busy. Go down to the river over there and dip seven times and on the seventh time you come out of your dipper you can go on home hill he's not even going to come out here and talk to you what wait a minute these stinking jews don't they know how to celebrate it's all these people I am a great warrior. I just kicked the Assyrians fanny from here to New Jersey. Darn by. I brought all this money. I got bags of money. I am somebody special. All our gods are special. We got great gods in Syria. Oh man, they're fantastic. We we party with them. Your God, what's wrong with your God? Where's he at? Well, he's not even going to talk to you. What do you mean he's not going to What kind of a stinking place is this rat hole? By the way, what am I doing out here? I should be in a king's palace getting healed. What am I out here by the hut for? Where is Elijah? I didn't even see the guy. He's not coming out. Oh. Well, you know what? <laughs> Naaman. Freaks out. Just go down here. Who are you? I'm just a messenger boy. Go down here and wash seven times. Oh, go down and wash seven times over here. Let me get this straight. I I rode all this way for days to get here, right? I brought all this money. I brought all these servants. You're just a servant. Who do you think you are? Nobody. I'm just a messenger boy. I'm telling you to go wash over here. Dip seven times over there. 
But I've had enough of this Jew stuff. Naaman was furious. And then he turns into an American Christian here in the 21st century, right here in Phoenix. It's a carbon copy. He then goes back to what he thinks is real, what he thinks. The key to your failures in life. Why did you fail in life? Why does your Christianity suck? You run your Christianity by what you think. I thought. So as you get that, you can hear somewhere behind you a toilet flushing. <laughs> That's your life, son. But I thought he'd come out here like they do in Syria. Man, we have some wild parades for our gods in Syria. This Mickey Mouse Jewish stuff, Jehovah didn't even show up. Where's he at? I thought he'd come out here and have a big old ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, he was looking for Barnum and Bailey. Barnum wasn't there. Bailey had already left. Elisha was there and he wasn't even coming out. But I thought, but I, I, I thought that God did things this way. I thought, let's get some psychology here, shall we? It's human nature to think a certain way. And when it doesn't go that way, there's a sense in the person of disappointment. There's a sense in the soul of frustration. It's human nature. The person's not wicked or evil. It's just people. That's what it is. People. It's people. People stuff. I thought it was. I thought I understood. I thought I had it down. I thought I had the problem right. God. It's not working out like I thought. So the person then starts to get fussy. <laughs> yes. My wife is in California tonight. Yes, I have complete free reign and total freedom. <laughs> yes, I am unstoppable tonight. <laughs> My wife is exactly like me. And when she thinks that things should go a certain way. She thinks I'm going to behave and think in a certain manner. <gasps> she's stunned when I don't do it. <laughs> oh, she's shocked. Oh, but oh, she gets a little fussy. I thought for sure he would call, come out here for some pump and pageantry. I thought he would call down lightning from the sky. Somebody told me when I was riding here, he called fire out of heaven and burned up a bunch of prophets from the veil. He took I was looking for a show on this one. I thought God was gonna do that. And I thought it should have gone that way. Well, I heard a preacher say this, so then I thought. He says, this is ridiculous. See? The matter you get as a human being, the faster your mind goes. Your mind keeps feeding you fuel to get you mad. So now he starts to rationalize his anger. This is ridiculous. Take dip over here? What are you crazy? The Abana River. The Far Par River, these all these rivers, they're better than all these rivers with the Jews. This place is a rattle. If all I needed to do was go dip in a river, for God's sake, I could have gone to a good river and dipped over there. I didn't need to ride all the way over here and haul this money from one end of the country to the other. I could have taken a dip at home. <laughs> Because I thought oh, he became a born again 
Christian in America. I thought it good. That way. What did he do? Oh, he got himself so mad he couldn't even see straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought deliverance worked. Mine. Mike, I thought that this, I thought you would say that. I thought you would do, I thought healing, this is how you get healed. I thought that. Oh, that's, that makes me mad. This naming guy was kind of like King David. King David would come up with the biggest bunch of cocky pop you've ever heard. He would completely crack up. But he had loyal friends. And they would talk to King David. They try to talk him off the ledge. And sometimes it would work, and sometimes it wouldn't. Well, Naaman had the same thing. He had a. These people weren't enraged over what Elijah didn't do, and what Jehovah didn't do. They weren't. They weren't mad. He was enraged. If you're if you're a fortunate person. And you're a hothead. Hopefully you get delivered. But if you don't, hopefully you've got somebody in your life who is calmer than you are. Because then you've got a chance. If you don't, you have zero chance of making it. Well, guess what happened? Just like King David, they come to him and hey, name it. Whoa, sir, with all due respect, may I may I be heard? Could I just say one word, sir? You're, you're great king. You're glorious. Man. You're, you're so wonderful. Could I just speak a word? If you don't mind, could I say something? Do you mind? May I speak, please? And his servant, who's not in a rage, who is not being controlled by his emotions, and not being controlled by negative thoughts, is able to process this thing rationally and saves his life. Because the servants were smarter than their Lord. Because the Lord said, well, I thought. The Christian says, I think it should go this way. I thought it should have gone that way. These other people said, wait a minute. I'm open-minded on this thing. Let me think about it without losing my temper. Maybe there's another way to look at this thing. Let me look at it differently. You know what? What has he got to lose? We're here anyway. We came all this way anyway. We're going back that way anyway. Why don't you, you know, just take a couple of dips? Sir. Well, this took quite a while to talk him into this because he was furious. And if you've ever been around people that have anger demons, they don't just get mad, click, and disappear. It fumes a while. Well, after he got done fuming, they were still talking to him gently. Sir, if you don't mind my saying, with your permission, I'll speak this. Hey, we're already here. We're going back that way anyway. Why not? You know, we ain't got nothing to lose. Why don't you just, let's just, we're here. Let's go ahead and do what the, uh, the messenger of the prophet told you to do. Hey, did you happen to notice that number seven there? That's funny, isn't it? I just thought I'd throw this in here for fun. YouTubers, seven's a... I'm not into numerology myself, so I, I don't uh, have a lot of interest in this stuff, but some people are really interested in numbers in the Bible. Well, seven's the number one number in the Bible. <laughs> and there's a lot of seven stuff in the Bible. It's weird. Here's some more seven stuff. I don't even know if you like seven. I was just taking a shot at it. I try to make people happy. It doesn't work often. Low percentage. But it stands for perfection or rest, supposedly. Here's some more sevens. You like sevens at all? Here's seven there. Seven. Anybody like seven? There's more sevens in Revelation. I was just throwing that in as a, as a 
kind of a sparkler, kind of something to get you out of your chair. Well, let's go back to the text then, Kings 5, 2 Kings. Then he went down, he calms down. He's listening to someone who's not in a rage. He's starting to listen to their common sense, so to speak, analysis of it. He says, well, you know what? You know, now you mention it. And, you know, when they come off their rage, they got a little puffing going. You ever had that? Seen that? Because they're poop. And he's poop, he's riding his, you know, he pooped. He said, you know, I'm really tired from getting infuriated at those idiots. He hops off his mule or whatever it was, chariot. I'll just go ahead and do it. I need to rest anywho. So he heads on into the water. Dunks. Comes out. Turns into an American Christian. Looks at himself. Oh, God, this didn't work. This is so stupid. I knew it. Uh, sir, your honor, uh, please, uh, Mr. Wonderful. The, it was seven times. <laughs> sir, if you don't, if I may speak, your greatness, your holiness, your gloriousness. May I mention it was seven. Oh, that's right. It was seven. Okay. He heads back in the water. He takes a dunk. Comes back out. Does it again. Does it again. Now he's starting to get his Christianity going. He's starting to get a little frustrated. Now he's turning into an American Christian. Wow, man, I've done everything I was asked to do. I did it exactly like I thought I was supposed to do. I did it five times. Now I've done it six. Come on, man. Wait a minute. Your gloriousness, if you don't mind, may I say that? Sir, it was, sir, if you mind. Your preeminence, bend over, let me kiss your fanny. It was seven, sir, your honor. Oh, you're right. Worthlessness. It was seven. So, at the prodding, of everybody in the world, the pastor, the pastor's wife, the family, the counselors, the therapists. Ah, oh, they're all over this Christian trying to get them to do the right thing. They're, they don't want to do the right thing, but if you get enough people around them and hurt them down there, they'll do it. <laughs> there he goes. He dips. He comes out in the seventh time. Boom! <laughs> My God! Syrian gods can't do this. He not only got cured of leprosy, God reversed time. Jehovah wasn't going to show his greatness to this goof from Syria. He was going to show him his eternity. His skin Turned like it was when he was in kindergarten. Okay. You got to be kidding. <laughs> You mean to tell me, not only can't the Syrian gods heal leprosy, they sure as heck can't turn back time. What would have happened to Naaman had he stopped at the sixth dip? He would have ended up like an American Christian, <laughs> complaining to their pastor. Pastor, this is nuts, man. I dipping like crazy in a river. You were. What happened? I went in the first time. I went in the second time, the third time. Dude, I was in the fourth time, fifth, killing it on the fifth one. What were you told to do? Well, I thought five was enough. 
your Christian life sucks and your future sucks because you don't listen <laughs> You don't listen because you thought It was to go some other way when you were told seven You not only missed out on your destiny, your ministry, your anointing, your future. You missed out on your eternity. Your eternity of rewards. You lost. Because you wouldn't listen. You thought it was the way you thought it was. Well, six has got to be enough. For crying out loud, six is a lot. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, six is a lot. I'm not in the mood to go dip somewhere in a river six times. Yeah, I get it. But you were told to do it seven. saith the Lord in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and daughters they will prophesy your old men they will dream be young and they will see visions on my servants and on my handmaidens not the namens of the world my servants and my handmaidens I will pour out my spirit saith the Lord and I will restore unto you the lost years the locusts have eaten. Naaman, my skin looked like this when I was in second grade. That's not possible. No, it isn't. It's what we call miracles. It's a miracle of obedience. That's why you don't have it. You thought it should have gone your way and you weren't going to obey. Thus saith the Lord, I will restore unto you the lost years that canker worms have eaten. Only God can restore lost years. No one else can. Restoration only occurs to those who obey. Not those who I thought, I think, I think. Those people are spiritual losers. They not only don't get anything restored, their future stinks Well, this story is not true is it? it sure is there's the River today right there. There's two different pictures of it still in Syria Yeah, there's the other one South of Damascus. They're both still there today Hey, let's take a look at our second 21st century Christian and our last one tonight What's Abraham mean oh. Father of multitudes Thank you. All right, let's go to Genesis 22 real quick It came to pass after these these things that God did tempt Abraham Nasa in Hebrew means to test him And he said Abraham He says hey Lord here. I am what's up? Take your son Okay, take your only son Isaac. Oh, okay Whom you love Okay, what does Isaac mean? What's I Isaac mean? Laughter Yeah, when they had Isaac Abraham was laughing Laughing in total joy wasn't he? I mean, he's the happiest guy in the neighborhood. He waited like a hundred years for that kid and he waited 100 years from that kid and 
This they had they had a bond of love nobody could conceive nor believe and in fact Jehovah was worried about it He said hey, I've been watching Abraham and Isaac I've been watching him every day For a few years now. I'm starting to get a little concerned and Unbeknownst to you you're being watched Just like Abraham and father father was watching Abraham saying you know what this I'm sensing this love for this kid is getting out of hand. This love for this kid is too much for me. I'm starting to wonder about this thing. Does he love that kid more than me now? I know he loves him more than Sarah. I know he loves him more than himself. That's obvious. But what's not clear here, Jehovah said, is does he love me more than him now? He's starting to wonder about it. You see, God knows things two ways. He knows things omnisciently. That means he knows everything prior to it happening, while it's happening, and after it happens. He doesn't know things experientially. He doesn't know them. I'm getting an email. <laughs> oh, Mike's he's preaching false doctrine again. No, I'm not. God doesn't know what you're gonna do tomorrow, even though he knows it omnisciently. He doesn't know it experientially because it hasn't happened yet. He said, wait a minute here. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with. Wait a minute here. That, I'm starting to wonder. He's talking it over with Jesus uh, uh, or something. Holy, somebody's having a conversation somewhere up there, and there's some red flags here. So Jehovah says, I'm going to test this thing. I hope you're listening because I'm talking about you now. You're being watched. And Jehovah knows stuff about you, but he doesn't know stuff about you. So he has to test you to find out. Get an email. Take your son, whom you love. Wow, what an introduction that was. And then he drops the bomb on him. Abraham was with him halfway through the sentence, but in the second half of that sentence, Something hit him in his soul that had to have hit hard And he loved that kid more than anything in this world including himself by far He said I want you to take him there and offer him up as a burnt offering a burnt offering you gotta be kidding me. A burnt offering is the offering that's completely consumed by fire. So what you do is the priest would crank up the flames, put the beast on the altar, and the burnt offering would burn it until it was nothing but ash. It was burnt out. You you want you want me to take my son, the most important thing in the world to me. And you want me to offer him as a burnt offering? You want me to turn him into a pile of ashes? Is that what you just said to me? And by the way, I'm not going to tell you where to do it at. Just go there and I'll tell you when you get there. Great, I can't wait to take this vacation. <laughs> Whatever he had to do to get over that conversation, he did because the next morning, incredibly, he packs up and leaves. Never says a word. Amazing. Completely unlike a 21st century Christian here in America. We got 50,000 wives. We got 200,000 whatabouts. But what about that? What about this? Why? 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 No, Abraham never said a word. 
loaded up the pack mules grabbed a couple of servants Headed on out The third day Abraham looked up Can you imagine that now Isaac doesn't know anything about this? The servants don't know anything about it. He kept this thing to himself Oh, yeah he couldn't possibly be a 21st century Christian. They they spill their beans everywhere. They're always talking. They can't eat their mouths shut. They say they're lying. Abraham never said a word. Nobody knew what the heck was going on. They thought when they were going up to build an altar for a burnt offering for worship. That's all they knew. But three days, and th can you imagine that? Three days and three nights, he's sitting there by the campfire. There it is. What Jehovah said to him. Take your son, your only son, the son you love. Take him to some unknown place on the plains of Moriah. And I want you to turn him into a heap of ashes. <clears throat> three days and three nights, he's got to go through that. Never says a word, keeps it to himself. They finally arrive and he says, Hey, listen, stay down here. I'll take the boy with me. We'll go up for worshiping and then we'll come back to see you later. Wow, what a statement. So there's a statement of faith because we don't find out until the New Testament pops up a thousand years later what he was really thinking because he never said anything. He said, We'll be back. And then by faith, Hebrews 11. When he was tested, offered up Isaac, his only son, the son he loved. And he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, what? That in Isaac shall your seed be called. And here's what he was thinking. We didn't find out about it till centuries later. Abraham's thinking three days by the campfire. I know what I know what the Lord's doing. Yeah, I know. He told me that I would have seed like the sand on the seashore. See, Abraham was doing what Christians don't do. During periods of testing, he was going over the promises of God. Christians don't do that. They sit around sucking in negativity, raising their negative emotions, and coming to false conclusions. Not Abraham. He's thinking about, you know something? Okay, I know what he's doing now. I'm going to kill my son, but he's going to raise him from the dead on that altar. I mean, resurrections then, as they are now, very rare. Oops. Uh, hey youtubers, do you like third day stuff? I thought I would throw this in to brighten your afternoon Third day things anybody nobody all right, you don't like it Anyway Mount Moriah. It wasn't a mountain. It was a range of mountains and They don't exactly know which one it was but some people think it was Calvary but They don't have any proof of that but anyway, there were other mountains in that range and whichever one Jehovah chose probably was Calvary would be a great analogy. He goes up there and Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering he, and made Isaac carry it. <laughs> he took the thing to light the fire. He goes up there with the uh, uh, maakale. It's a uh, kitchen knife where you cut meat in the kitchen. It's not a warrior knife, it's a food knife in the kitchen. He takes the knife up with him. He's going to be carving. His son up. And they both go up together, it says. Isaac then says to him, Hey, Dad, we've done this before. Every time you do this, you always take me with you. I mean, we're like that. Everything Abraham did, Isaac went with him. He was the greatest thing that ever happened. He loved that kid more than anyone. Well, we've been doing these burnt offerings, I don't know how many times. We ain't got anything to burn. Where's the burnt offering? He says again another statement. 
that a Christian would never say, but he would. God will provide. A lamb for the offering. My son, God will provide. Man for burn. See, this is not a person who's flooded with negative thoughts constantly, who lives on negative emotions continuously, who gets frustrated and angry when things don't go the way I thought they should. <clears throat> no, that wasn't Abraham, was it? No, far from it. He was like Naaman in the end, someone who obeyed when he didn't understand. He didn't understand anything about this. That's why he was included in the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11, because faith on pistis is to believe, having no doubts and no unbelief. You believe no matter what your mind tells you. You believe no matter what other people tell you. You believe no matter what your eyes tell you. You believe what no matter what the church tells you. You just keep on believing. Abraham was obeying. So he, unlike Christians nowadays, get to see incredible miracles from God. <clears throat> what was he doing there? Taking those thoughts captive. You don't think he had negative thoughts? Ha oh, Demons were attacking him like crazy. That whole trip, three days and three nights, sitting at the campfire, middle of the night, waking up at two in the morning, looking around. You don't think the devil wasn't on him? He was all over him, pounding him with every negative thought in the world. Abraham took those thoughts captive to the obedience of Yahweh. He said, I'm not going to receive those negative thoughts. I was told that my seed would be like a sand on the seashore. I was told that by God himself. Something's my son's going to be raised from the dead if I have to. Something's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm not thinking this through. It's not what I think. God told me to do it. And I'm going to do it what he says, not what I think. That's what we're looking at. Here. No problem, son. God will provide. They came to the place that God told him. That's it, right over there. Listen, Christians want to hear from God. They've had a thousand counseling sessions or whatever they were. You don't know how many times I've been told that by somebody. You know, my, Brother Mike, I can't hear from God anymore. I pray and it seems like my prayers are hitting the ceiling. Nothing seems to get through anymore. I can't hear anything. You have no idea how many times I've, been, I've heard that. Several hundred. People who can't hear from God are always the ones who don't obey. And they do what they think is right. Obedient ones are the ones who hear from God. Abraham is right over there. Can you imagine that? It's right over there. Four words. Any Christian in this room would give anything to hear four words from God, wouldn't you? If I could line you up right here, so what's your four words? What's your, get the mic and hear what four words would you like to hear from God? What four, what, everybody would have something good. It's right over there, Abraham. Well, Abraham heard from God because he was an obedient believer. Disobedient believers dip six times and wonder why nothing happened. Well, they were told to dip seven times. Then the unthinkable, the unbelievable happens. He builds up the altar, he puts the wood there, he grabs his son and hog ties his boy. Can you believe that? That's unreal. He hog ties his son and 
thumps him on the thing It's probably a 10 or 12 year old kid The kids got to be panicking Had that happened nowadays CPS would have been on Abraham like you can't believe they would have cleaned him out Sarah would be down with Rick at the chapel the jail Abraham is listening to his son The whole time is dad, what are you doing? Dad no, Dad How come you're tying me up? Dad, I love you Dad, what's going on? Where are you? Why am I laying here? You said God would provide Dad. Dad, what are you doing with that knife? What? You can imagine the trauma Isaac's going through here. I mean, he can't believe his eyes. The only person that he loves more than anything in the world, his own dad. Throws him on top of the altar. He knows what's coming. Because he'd been through many burnt offerings before. Wow, what a story. Abraham never said a word. Put him on top of the wood. Then picked up the kitchen knife. Picked up the knife. Isaac's got to be trying to get off there or shaken in fear or something. I can imagine he's holding the kid here. Picks it up here, ready to go. Because in his mind, we found out a thousand years later, I'm going to kill my son, but God's going to raise him from the dead. Wow, what a story. What a story. The good Lord yells at him, hey! Don't touch that boy. In fact, don't do anything to him. Untie him and take him off there. Right now. Now I know. Oh, you don't understand. God knows everything about you omnisciently, but he doesn't know much about you experientially. And so he has to find out what kind of a person you really are. And the only way to find that out is to watch your behavior and listen to what you say. You mean you didn't know Abraham up until that? No, I didn't. Experientially, I didn't know. But now I know. You, you wouldn't even withhold the most important thing in the world to you. You have no idea how many counseling sessions I've had where I left broken hearted in a way because I couldn't get a mother to release their dysfunctional child to God. And he just let them go. He wouldn't do it. They couldn't. The kid never got any better. If I can get the parent to release their child to God, the Holy Spirit will move on that child. Now I'm seeing. Don't you see this? What do you mean you're seeing? We're talking about God here. No, God sees things omnisciently, but he only sees it when it actually happens experientially. Wow. Listen, on Judgment Day, I'm not going to be able to tell the Lord. Well, Lord, look, yeah, I was struggling there and screwing up left and right, but, you know, I really believe I would have changed later. And I think you should give me those rewards based on what I would have, should have, could have done. 
Wow. Let's let's snap out of it for a minute here. And let's get to reality. I realize that's a four letter word to Christians. Let's look at reality. Okay. You were tested and you failed your last test. And now God does not know you're going to change. He doesn't know that. He knows omnisciently because he knows everything, right? There's two ways to know things, omnisciently and experientially. And to God, the most important thing is experientially. Only people who obey see God's great miracles. I'll prove it to you. Let's back up before Isaac was born. Check this out. God makes a statement about Abraham, which I thought was interesting. He says, I know him. He will command his children. He didn't have any children. And his household. All he had was Sarah. And they will keep my ways. Well, how did he know that? Because he had told everybody else that. He told his wife. He told his servants. He told his employees. He told the shepherds. He told the cattle. He told the blacksmith. Everybody. So Jehovah had seen a pattern of obedience and behavior in Abraham that he hasn't seen in you yet. Yeah, you're going to fool the devil tonight. You're going to change huge. Because you're going to prove to the Lord that you're like Abraham. And soon he's going to say about you, now I know what she will do. It's time for blessings and miracles for her. Well, God knows everything. That ain't going to help you. He has to know what you're going to do. Well, what I normally do, Lord, is I just receive a bunch of negative thoughts in my head, and then I have a bunch of negative emotions, and then I get down and depressed, and then I lose my face, and then I have to get a trip to the bathroom because I got diarrhea. Okay, that's your normal behavior, and God knows you do that, but you can change your behavior and show God that He will now know something else about you. And you don't have to go take a big fat dump every time you get a bunch of testing and trials come your way. You can stand in the liberty wherein Christ has set you free. And you cannot become entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Then he will know. And you're in line for miracles and blessings from God. You don't believe me? Check it out. Don't believe me? Okay. Abraham lifted up his eyes, he looked behind him. Jehovah yelled at him, Don't touch that boy. You didn't have to tell him that twice. Then a miracle happens. And here's where you fit perfectly into the story. Right behind you the whole time was the Holy Ghost trailing you with your miracle from God during your trial and your temptation. It was right behind you. Yes, Abraham, look back there. Oh, ram caught in the thicket. He was on that ram so fast. Psst. Michael Phelps. Isaac was off that altar so fast you wouldn't even believe it. <laughs> they burnt that ram to ashes.
Abraham called the place Yahweh Yerah. The God will see to it. We change that to God will provide. Same thing. If God's going to see to something, He's going to provide. And then God said to the obedient born again Christian in the 21st century, I'm swearing to you because you have obeyed and done this thing and you have not withheld what's most important to you from me. I will bless you. I will multiply you. Because I didn't know before. I knew it, but I didn't know it. Now I know it. I know what you'll do. You don't understand. What you do and what you say and how you think is very important to God. He watches you all the time. He follows you through your failures and your defeats and right behind you. He was carrying your miracle, financial, physical, emotional, spiritual. It was right behind you. Abraham, look back there. While he had his boy strapped up there, while he was raising his arm, the eternal God who provides had brought that ram up the other side of the mountain, unbeknownst to him. And he got him caught in that tree. You don't understand, do you? You're going through hell and high water. You don't get it behind you. A miracle's coming up the other side. Unless you pull a name in. If six is good enough, isn't it? God, I mean, six is a lot. Shit. No, you were told. Seven. All right, I'm so mad right now, I'm going to do eight. Whoa! Look. You were told seven, not eight. Doofus. <laughs> That's prophetic for Christians who don't obey. And I will keep your blessings going like you can't even conceive or believe, like the sand on the seashore, born-again Christian in 21st century. Your blessings, because you obeyed, and now I know you will obey, are going to be endless. And I'm going to stick it right in your enemy's face. Oh yeah, your enemies. Those are the people that talk about you. The relatives, the church people, the neighbors, the exes, all those people. They trash you all the time. They, they see you as a loser. Fail. In your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. We're sitting here because of the Savior who came through his seed. Why am I doing all these things for you? Because you. Is six good enough? All right, I'll show the Lord I really love him. How about nine? No, cracker head. You were told seven. Listen, you were told to forgive those people. Well, wait a minute. I forgave two of the four. Whoa! You were told to forgive all four. You were told to stop yelling at your kids. I stopped yelling at the, the two girls, but myself. Oh. But now I don't know you're going to obey. I've cut my porn down to twice a week. Okay, that's good. See, miracles come to those who and how are you able to obey? You have to do something. How does God know you're going to obey? 
by watching you do it Not wishing and hoping you were going to do it Not dreaming about doing it. Oh none of that stuff's gonna work You got something in your life that you love more than God he's watching you He sees that and he's wondering Does she love that? Does he love that more than me? Is is he like that person more than me? Is it money? Is it sports? Is it recreation? Is it career? Is it is something there more than me? God's thinking. What am I going to do about it? Should I just let him go, or shall I test them? First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 there it is second Corinthians casting down imaginations And every high thing that exalts against against the knowledge Of God bringing every thought Naaman didn't do it He flew into a rage Abraham did never said a word three days heading to the Mount Moriah range what was he doing there? Taking those negative thoughts captive, killing them. Right? Here's the divine revelation of why there's so many screwed up ministers. Do you ever wonder why? Nobody? I guess it's just me then. I always wonder why there's so many jacked up ministers. Verse 5, we just read it. There's a verse 6 to this. It says, being ready to ekpikeo, vindicate all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Jesus put it another way. Listen, what you need to do is take this railroad log out of your eye so you can see clearly to take the Teeny speck out of her eye, she said. Hey, God's got to say to you, now I know, before He's going to put you into your ministry. Otherwise, He's as dumb as we are. He didn't hear me. They graduate from Bible college and seminary and all these different places and they get a certificate And then that makes them qualified for ministry jobs <sighs> Muy stupido <laughs> oh, Brother Mike's bilingual oh boy. Listen Jack, you're not ready for the ministry until God says now I know the only way you can be ready for the ministry and for God to say now I know is to have gone through some hell and some high water I'm going back to Hillsong I'm gonna come out here start naked with a guitar some night and make you guys pay. That's right. I'll, I'll come out like Hillsong. Yeah I, I can't play a guitar, but I'll fake it <laughs> Listen, you gotta you can't get other people straightened out until you straighten your own jacked up self out, Jack. Your name's Jack, I apologize. I'm using it. I mean you personally, Jack. Mark chapter four. People don't obey because they what? They have stones in their life that God told them, get this crap out of your yard. Get this crap out of your life. Get rid of this insane person you're dating, you're living with, you're friends with. Get these idiots out. Why? Because God doesn't know if you're going to obey with them in your life, with that in your life. Get rid of these stones and dump them. I know you got saved and you were, oh, it was great. You're. When you first got saved, it was beautiful. You're happy. Oh boy. Receive the word. Oh, you couldn't believe it. It was great. Wow. It's wonderful. 
Acts chapter 5 Peter and the other apostles answered what they were standing there being reamed out by the Church religious leaders and they said we should obey God rather than man Wow Peter would not be popular in our society We do things like we think it ought to be done. Well, I thought it was that Doesn't matter what you think, you do as you're told, and the blessings roll. Acts 5 again, we are his witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Ghost who's following you with something behind you. Your miracle was right there the whole time. And it's only given to those who what? Obey. They have no root in themselves. They endure for a time, but after the Lord, when Philipsis pressure and persecution arises, they do what? They get offended. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, there's some strong Christians here tonight, but they have not fulfilled their destinies yet. And the reason for it, they only dip six times. They were told to dip seven. They didn't do it. Why didn't they do it? I don't know. Different reasons, different things happen. I don't care. Every person here tonight has the free will choice to decide to take the seventh dip. Every single person here tonight can get those stones out of their lives if they choose. To change and choose to repent. Father, when I was young, I never understood repentance <sighs> until later. I now see it clearly. When I change my behavior and change my attitude and change how I think, you then know. And you needed to know, like you did Abraham. You knew he would keep your laws and your regulations. You knew that. But you didn't know if he loved Isaac more than you. Until you saw it. Right now, in the name of Jesus, some of you know you have been called some high calling from God. Higher than what you're doing right now. Some of you are sitting here, you know you were called to something special. You know this isn't the end of your life. You know it shouldn't have gone this way. And you know there's still time because right behind you, <coughs> the Holy Ghost is following you with your miracle. Your miracle's there. You got a miracle coming, friend. It'll never come until father knows And you change And you're gonna do that right this second You're gonna do it. Now I'm gonna help you do it too I'm gonna do everything I can to help you Lord, I've been thinking negative thoughts and saying negative things for so long now. It's become a part of me. I know you're, you watch me and you hear me. And you know I'm going to fail again. But I'm going to repent tonight so you will know that I will obey 
so I am eligible for the blessings of Abraham. I'm going to change right now. I'm going to beg you to forgive me. I want to be like Abraham and do what I'm told. I'm going to do what you say and not what I think. Because what I think is not important, it's what you think. I'm going to change completely starting tonight. I can't change everything tonight, but I can change everything over time because the Holy Ghost is following me. He's right behind me with my miracle, just like he was Abraham. The ram was right behind me and he didn't know it. Lord, the devil has sent evil spirits to block me, to attack my mind, to ruin my faith, to attack me and to give me negative emotions. These are evil spirits. The Bible says I have complete authority over evil spirits. The Bible says I have total command over these demons that are attacking me and oppressing me by the blood of Jesus Christ and the broken body of Jesus. I have complete command over this sickness in my body. I can cast these things out of me. I can cast them out of my children. I can stop living in sin as a carnal Christian. I can change. I know I can. I can become a broken hearted, anointed man of God. I can forgive these people that have ruined me and hurt me. And instead of making an excuse well i forgave almost all of them no you told me to forgive all of them you told me to release all of them and i'm going to do it tonight father please forgive me. please forgive me please forgive me for wasting precious years you're not going to restore me like you did Naaman unless I become a child who obeys. You're not going to restore the lost years that grasshoppers ate unless I obey and stop doing what I think is right. Please forgive me, Lord. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Now, Brother Mike's not doing a very good job up there praying. I can do better. And if you can do better than me right now, come on down to the front here. If you get up and come down and stand here and you show me you can pray better than I was just praying. You can repent better than me. Just come right down here in the front. Dear Jesus, I am going to change. I am going to become an obedient servant of God. And I am going to see the windows of heaven open. And the blessings flow through my life just like Abraham. And I'm going to change in the name of Jesus. I'm going to change right now. I can't take this anymore. I cannot live another week with my miserable life with me in charge. I quit. I quit. I dipped six times. I did not dip seven. And I'm asking you to forgive me, Lord. I'm asking you to forgive me. Have mercy on me. He told me to forgive all ten of those people, and I didn't. I forgave seven of them. Mm -hmm. And I blocked all my blessings. And you do not know that I will obey because I didn't. Leave. You know I won't. He told me to forgive my ex. He told me to forgive him. He told me to forgive the woman he ran off with. He told me to forgive him. I tried, but I didn't do it. Well, now you don't know that I'm going to obey. In fact, you know I won't. He told me to forgive myself. 
I did I thought I did until yesterday. I did something stupid and I ringed myself out again Now, you know Lord I didn't forgive myself I'm so sorry I had bitterness in my heart frustration in my heart and These sicknesses won't leave me because of it. my sicknesses my body are related to my soul. I know it My child has demons and I'm the one that let the demons in my family. I did it. My sin let the spirits in my home, and these spirits took my children. My children are not at fault. I'm at fault. And I have never repented of that in tears. Now my kids got demons and they're starting to act as bad or worse than me They have the same temper problems the same addiction problems the same rage problems I had And it wasn't their fault. It was mine And I want my child set free tonight. I have to have I can't stand to see my child die and go to hell because I drove them there and they're not going to get delivered until I repent first you see Jehovah didn't go to Isaac he went to the dad he went to Abraham when you were a Christian you're rotten the sinful lust in your temper those demons jumped on your kids now. They've got lust and they've got temper problems You know where they got them you Look in the mirror tonight You'll see very clearly where they got them. you And the demons won't leave your kids until you repent of what you did to them And you're gonna do it right now, aren't you? Okay the ministry team come on up now. We're ready to pray for you saints if you need to leave God bless you. Thanks for coming tonight <coughs> Thank you for your prayers and your donation. We love your support Thank you for helping us Thank you for caring about us You're gonna repent right now in the name of Jesus for what you've done to yourself and your kids Your kids are on the road to hell right now and you can sense it and they're only in grade school and you can see they're starting to get dark They got that dark look in their eye. They got that temper thing. They got the out of control emotional thing there You can sense it. You're picking it up in your kids And you remember years ago you had it Remember that they got the same spirits you gave them And the Lord will deliver your kids no question after you repent first Jehovah went to Abraham not Isaac Let's pray come on Lord Jesus, please forgive me for what I've done whatever you got to confess just confess it come on Say it. thank you Jesus. God help me Father God if my child ends up burning in hell I don't know how I'm ever going to live with myself. I can't let that happen. I can't. Do it. Father, forgive me. Forgive me for what I've done to my kids. I'm so sorry. I love my kids. I care about them. I didn't know what I was doing when I was younger. The devil tricked me. He he used me to reserve a spot in the lake of fire for my son, and my daughter, and I can't stand that. I can't take that. I'm like Abraham Lord. I love my son. I love my daughter And they won't get healed or delivered until I repent first I Have to get delivered first in the name of Jesus father forgive me right now God have mercy upon me. Father help me right now. Please help me Lord. Please help me Lord Jesus. Please help me Lord Jesus. Help me God Save me Lord 
Help me Jesus. Come on, you're Lord. doing great. Pray harder. You're getting closer and closer. I'm proud of you. Keep going. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord, for what I've done to my family and myself. Father, I hurt myself. I embarrassed myself. I humiliated my kids. Oh, my God. My kids actually hate me now. I'm so, so hurt, so embarrassed. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Please forgive me. The rest come out tonight. Get out of there. Come out, I said. Now. Come out now. Quickly. Come out quicker. Quickly. Come out. There he is. Come out right now. Go. Come out of there. Come out of her feet right quickly. Come out. Father, forgive me right now in the name of Jesus. Carrying all these burdens for all. Come out. Come out right now. Quickly. Quick. Come out quickly. Forgive me. Carrying all these burdens all my life for all these crazy children. All these bad men. Warm me out. Oh, Jesus. Forgive me. Oh, God. God, forgive me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, lift this nightmare of my life off of me. Oh, my kids went bad. Jesus, save me. Come out right now. Keep coughing. Come out there right now. Come out. Come out right now. Keep coughing. Come out. God Almighty, help me. God, help me. all these pains, all this suffering, all these disappointments, all these disappointments eat me alive. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. All the pain my husband put me through, the nightmare, the marriage. Come out there. Come here it comes. Come out. Come on out. Come on out right now. Come on out. The nightmare of the marriage. Come out. Now. Get out of my body right now. Go. Come out quickly. Come out. Every bad man took advantage of my looks and my body and my Satan. I hate your guts. You control my brain all my life. Get out of there! I said. Come out! I said. Out! Get out! I said. Come out! Come out! Keep coughing. Come out! Come out of there right now! Come out! All these men stare at me with lust in their eyes constantly. I draw in lustful men. Come out right now! Come out right now! Come out! Evil! Come out! Evil! Come out of there! All these bad men chasing me. Stop it. Come out right now. That's all they do. That's the first thing they think. That's the first thing they think. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out. Get out. Come out right now. Every from my husband. Come out right now. Every one of them. Every disappointment. Every heartache from me. Go now. Come out in the name of the Lord. Now. Come out. Now I said. Now I said. Now. Stop blocking my destiny. I can't. I'm going to obey. I'm going to obey in Jesus' mighty name. Come out right now. All the bad men, all the disappointing children, all the people that lied to me, they all lied. I forgive her. She stole my husband. I forgive her. She stole him. Come out. Every thought of her sleeping with him. Having intercourse with my husband, all those thoughts, that whole nightmare comes out now. Everything about her that I hate, go now. Everything about her I hate, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? What's wrong with you? Take a big breath. Take a breath. Thank you, Jesus. Put him down. He's okay. Turn away from him. There you go. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. There you go. Good girl. There it is. Okay, that's the Holy Ghost. He's forgiving you right now. Come out. Every spirit from the boy's father, come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Every spirit from that boy's father, come out of there right now. Go. Every self criticism, self criticism, come out. For, I forgive myself. I release this now in Jesus' name. Every spirit, come out of there. Get out right now. Tell him to go. Come out. Low self esteem, criticism, negativity. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. 
Let her go. Come out. Come out. Come out. I am not a failure. I am not a loser. I am not a failure. Come out of there. You let her go. Come out. Yes, you do. Let her go. You are not a failure. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me for seeing myself as a failure. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Take a big breath. Holy Spirit, come in. Come out. Fear demon, come out. Lust, come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Negativity, low self esteem, self criticism. Come out. Forgive her right now. What's her name? Kathy. Kathy, be forgiven. Be blessed. I release you. I release him. Out. Come on. Go. Go. Lord, forgive me. Say it. Please forgive me, Lord. I have bad thoughts and feelings about myself. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. Satan, I command you in Jesus' name to come out of me right now. Get out of my head. Get out of me right now. Go. Go. Come out. Come out of there. You get out of my body. Every ugly man that ever touched me. You rapist. Come out of there. Come out of there. Moral sex come out. Come out, pervert. Come out, old pervert. Come out now. Come out. Native American witchcraft, shamans, sweat lodges, false gods go. Come out right now. Out. Come out of her throat. Come out. Come out of her throat. Come out. Out. Come out. Satan, come out of me. Say that. Come out of me. Come out of me. Say it. Come out of me. Kathy, I forgive you and I release you. Kathy, I forgive you. Come on, pray for her. Forgive her. Out. Out. Out! Get out of my body! Out! 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 Come on! Out! Out! Who hurt her? She says she has severe anxiety, depression. Over what? She doesn't know. When did it start? Depressed most of my life. Oh, as a kid? As a kid? Did you get molested? Did you get beat up? Uh, not molestation as you know molestation, but it was myself. What was it, fondling? Yeah. Who did it? Friends of mine. A friend, what's her name? Uh, Lily. Lily, it's a babysitter? No, no, they were friends. They were fondling you? Yeah. Lily? Yes. Well, how old were you? I was nine or ten. Nine or ten? Okay. Raise your hands. All right. Now, when Lily was touching your body, a demon entered a fear. Lily, did you forgive her? You did? Okay. All right. Breathe. Lily, come out of her right now. Lily, every demon of lust and fear you put into my body, Come out right now. Lily, come out. Lily, come out. Come out. Right now. Come out, you pervert. Spirit of fear, come out of me right now. Demon of fear, come out of me. Demon of fear, come out right now. Quickly. Come out. Demon of fear, come out of my body right now. Go. Come out of me by the authority of the word of God. I do not have anxiety. I do not have fear. That's you doing it. Come out of me, Lily. Come out here. Lily, you pervert. Huh? Was it a bad man? Your husband cheated on you? Did you know the woman? No, I didn't know all the What's your husband's name? Corey. He's dead now. Corey? 
Corey, all right, that's it. Ready? Breathe. Corey, you were loaded with lust demons. You were a serial cheater, and you betrayed your wife over and over again. And you broke her heart. Corey, I command you to come out of her. There it is. Let your tears go. There it comes. There it comes. Come out. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At a girl. Louder. Come out. Corey, come out of there right now. Corey, you pervert. Come out of your wife. All your demons, Corey. All the demons from Corey. Come out of the woman of God. Go. Come out. You cheater. You stabbed me in the back a hundred times. Come out right now. Get him out of there. Yes, please get him out of there. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. Is that a Kundalini spirit or a fear spirit? I think it's by God. I, I, I From witchcraft or New Age or what? New Age, yes. New age. You were in New Age? Yes. Oh, we're going to repent of that. That's extremely dangerous. Go. God, I'm so sorry I hurt your feelings. I stabbed you in the back when I went to New Age. Take another yawn. That was one. That one came out. Good. Take a yawn. Big one. Come out. Father God, please. I want your blessings on this faith healer. I want you to take these hands and put it on sick people so they can be healed. That's what they're for. Healing the sick. But his heart is not for lust. Spirit, I command you, release this faith healing man of God. Let go of him. Let go, you pervert. I curse you porn. I curse you women. Lust of the eyes. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Pride of life. Come out. Come. There he is. Python, come on, that body. Come on, come on, my back. Come on, my back. Come out. Come out. Come on out. Come out right now. Come out of my back. Come out of my back. Go right now, quickly. Corey, get out, get out of my spine. Come out right now. Corey, get him out of my spine. Get out of there right now, I said. Get out right now. Just get mad. Get out of there. There's another one. Take another yawn. Good, that, those are demons coming out. Keep going. How's Where are you going? going in? How do you get in there? I don't know. It's been when, did, when did he get in there? It's been there for, for a long time. How long is that? Long since I've been a kid. Okay. What age do you think he got in? I about eight years old. Eight? Okay. And then what happened to you when you were seven? I, I think it's a, it's, it's a rust. Well, did, you get, did you uh, get a hold of some Playboys when you were a kid or something? Well, I think it had a lot to do with uh, maybe seeing my cousin naked in the shower. I don't know. Something. At what age? I was about eight. She was a girl? Yes. Yeah, older, older than you? Older. How'd you see her? I walked in and she was in the shower. Oh. And uh, what'd she do? She was just in the shower. But what did she do when you saw her? She didn't see me. Oh, you just saw her and saw her? Then what'd you do? I walked out. Walked out, but you remembered her? Did you see her breast? I just, yeah, I've seen everything. Did you see her vagina? How about her body? And when you were, when you saw her, what were you thinking at that moment? I think it just it drove me into a muscle state. Oh, uh, no. What were you thinking at that moment? I knew it was nice. Not that you liked it. And what was her name? Laura. Laura. Okay. Raise your hands. Close your eyes. What's your name? Tony. Tony, okay. Lord, I got Tony here, and he wants to uh, serve you. And uh, he's supposed to be healing people with these hands. He's supposed to be a faith healer, healing people that are sick. But his life's been ruined because he saw his uh, cousin, and she was beautiful. And the demon tricked him into going in the bathroom that day. And then her spirit of lust jumped into him. There he is right there. And we come in. There it comes. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Come out of him. Demons from the cousin. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Demons from the cousin. Come out right now. Corey, come out. Come out right now. 
Come on right now. Go. Is he gone? He came out. It came, it jumped into you when you went in the bathroom. As soon as you start looking at her, you saw her breasts, you saw her bottom, and you go, wow, she's really, that's nice. And she, as soon as you sensed that was nice, the demon that was watching you jumped. And then after that, you started adultery, porn, masturbation, everything. Everything. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, God, I'm so incredibly sorry. I ruined my life by listening to that lust demon. I picked up in the bathroom that day. I'll repent of it right now. Let your tears go. Come on. Just repent of it. Big yawn. A big yawn. Come out, Satan. Get out of my head and stop blocking my healing ministry. You get out of my body, you sinking fear of spirit. I command you to come out right now. Go. Spirit of fear, I command you to come out. I want my ex-husband out of me right now. I want all of his demons. They came right back to me after he died. Go! Corey, come out! Come out of my spine! Corey! Corey, go! Go! Corey, come out! Depression, come out! Anxiety, come out! It's all lies. I don't have any of that. Get a demon of fear. Go! Why did you like me? I like it. I didn't like it. It just kind of happened. It was kind of what do you mean? Sudden. You were doing it. Right? Yeah. Why I were you doing it? I, I just kind of got into Why did you do that? When I, okay, when I was going, uh, I was going to a uh, place for vitamins, a natural food store, and uh, this girl there kept using this pendulum to say which uh, vitamin I should take, and, uh, and and she kind of, you know, explained How'd she it do it? and it seemed exciting. How'd she do it? She, she held this pendulum out. Oh, like that? Yeah. And held it where? She, she just held it in front of herself. And she right it here like this? Yeah, yeah. And she put her hand where? She, she held the pendulum. She pulled it in on out of the pocket. She held it right here, and it would go back and forth. She would say, is, is this a good one? And it would say no. Oh, she was showing it vitamins? Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. She, that's that's when the first one jumped in you. Raise your hand. Oh, God. Father God, when she was in that vitamin store, that witch pulled out a pendulum. And that pendulum was answering her questions. And that familiar spirit jumped into her at that moment. And she became intrigued with New Age. And right now, we command that health food spirit that pendulum demon to come out of her in the name of Jesus right now Corey, I command you to get out of my body right now get out of there I command you depression come out of me I don't have depression that's a lie come out of me come out I said depression come out now depression come out now get out Pendulum demons, come out, pendulum. Come out now. 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 Right now. Corey, come out of body right now. I renounce my husband's sin and his adultery and his evil. I release it from my soul right this second. Go now. Come out right now. Quickly. Come out quickly. Get out of there quickly. Satan, I command you in Jesus' mighty name. Let my wife go. Let her go right now. Let go. Come out of that body quicker. You stinking pervert. Get out of that body right now. Go. Go. Go now, I said. Hurry up. Come out. Go now, you pervert. Masturbation, porn, and lust. Go. Masturbation, porn, and lust. Go. Come out of there, you perverts. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Get out. Go. Go. Go now. Get out of there faster. Come out, you pervert. Come out of there, you pervert. Anger, rage, hatred, porn, lust. 
Go! You get that thing out of your head right now. Get him out. What do you mean, what thing? The thing that's caused you to waste your life. Exhale right now. Are you getting tired of living a wasted life? You're supposed to be serving God. You're supposed to be healing people. Get out of there, I said. Shut up and come out. Hurry up. Stop it. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Come out now. Jealousy. Keep coughing. Come out. Out of my heart. Oh. Kathy. 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 You gotta get rid of Kathy. You gotta get rid of Kathy out of here. Right now, rejection I know it hurts. It's stabbing the back. Like, no. it'll, it'll make you sick. Let's let her go. Let him Kathy go. Let him Kathy go. Breathe. Breathe. Out you go. Out you go. Come out. Come out. Come out, buddy, right now. Yo, stinking demon. What do you think you're doing in there? Come out of that body right now. I'm a man of God. I'm a servant of the Lord. You're not supposed to be in my body. Come out of there right now. <laughs> Come out of there right now. Go. Faith and you let my wife go. I command you in Jesus' money. I command you let her mind go. <laughs> Stop putting lies in her head. Stop making up stories. Come out. Go. I want my husband gone for the rest of my life. Go now. He's physically dead, but spiritually he's still here. Honey, I love you, but I must let you go now. I'm replacing you with my heavenly father. Pendulum demon, I'll let you out of my body right now. Get out of there and go. Yes, go. Go now. Go, now. go right now. Hurry up. Go right now. What's going on? Hey, uh, yeah, just, uh, I'm trying to take control of my life here in the name of the Lord. I'm trying to get rid of all the... What's the problem? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I brought spirits into my house and stuff like pornography and now my, right. now my son's addicted to heroin. Yeah, okay. Now raise your hand here, Lord. Father God, I want you to forgive this man for what he's done. He was. He did what I was mentioning earlier. He he brought a bunch of demons in the house, and they took the kids. And now the kids have a spot reserved for them in the pits of hell. And he loves his son. He doesn't want him to go to hell. And he's sorry for what he did. He's going to tell you he's sorry. God, I'm so sorry for my sin. I'm so incredibly sorry. All the women. Oh, these women I slept with, they all had demons. I didn't know that. I, they transferred demons into me. I forgive them. How you doing? What you need? Uh, my husband. That's your husband? And what's the problem? Um, he, we've gotten deliverance. He's been... I mean, I've been taking him to every healing room What's wrong with him? He can see, sense, and hear spirits, but yeah. they won't let... I believe God has given that, him that gift, but they're not letting him use that gift there. Now, when did that have start? Years and years and years ago. It's gotten better. Oh. But now, was he hurt or abused as a kid? You don't know? No, not that Hey, did you ever abuse as a kid or hurt as a kid? Yeah. Uh, just when my father left me, I was with my kids. When you what? When my father left me. Oh, your dad left you? You were how old? Like did that hurt dad? Yeah. Did you have a rotten stepdad come in? Uh, no, I never did. Did your mom not remarry? No. Okay, and then when did you start seeing stuff? Like seeing things? Like probably... Hey. I used to see it when I was like a little kid, but like, I stopped. What did you it. see? It's like my mom said, like I'll see like a bat or something. And, like, I've seen things too, like when I was like seventeen. Like I seen this this one time, I seen this one guy like burying or something, and my, my banner just crossing. Like it looked weird, and I was like, 
was smoking a cigarette outside my, my work area, and then it went away and just completely disappeared. And I heard these laughing, like these people laughing, like out of the distance, like with despair. Now, how long have you been like, married, married her? I've been married for about six months now. Six months? Yeah, and like. And who, were you married before like, that? No, I've never been married before that. But uh, I've been hearing them laugh, and like they've just been like torturing me, and tormenting me, and like this evil yeah. thing, and just been messing with me more than that. But it never happened before your dad left? No. It happened when I was like six, seventeen. Now, hey, this guy's got familiar spirits. And his wife thinks it's a gift, but it's actually a, it's a demonic. It's not a gift. Yeah, because and, they're trying to like get me to like practice magic. And yeah, they're, they're, trying trying to to they're trying to get him to sit. Yeah, that, that's wanted. not the Holy Ghost. Do you think that's a gift? Okay. Okay, he doesn't think it's a gift. So we're, uh, we're okay there, okay? okay? He'll help you. Hey. Hi. Hi, how are you? What you need? Come hey. here. What I you just, need? I, I had a transgressional curse. Like, I'm very angry all the time. I'm uh -huh. angry all when the did that time. start? Um, when I decided to get clean. Are you on drugs? I did in the past. Yes. Okay, what kind? Between you and I only. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you was little, did somebody hurt you bad? My mother. What'd she do? She molested me. Fondling or uh, oral sex? Fondling. Fondling? And then after that, did somebody I, else do it? I was raped. I was raped. And what age was that? 13. 13, okay. Now, here's what happened. And after that, were you promiscuous? Lots of guys. Uh, how many, have you ever been married? Three times. Three times, okay. Now, here's what happened. When you were little and your mother was fondling you, a re spirit of rejection, a demon of rejection from your mom got into your brain. He's right there. Look at him. And then he let in a lust spirit later. And then he is the one who has all these relationships that break up and all these bad men. And then the lust demon is the one that draws in the chemicals to make you feel better. To get away from him. So they work together. This one makes you feel better to get away from his torment. Then he torments you again. Then you need to feel better. It's a vicious cycle. But it started with him and your childhood. And your mother's name was? Debbie. Debbie. And then uh, the rape was of what age? 13. Out, what was his name? Larry. Okay. Hold your hands. Dear, dear Lord Jesus, I, uh, I'm standing here talking to this beautiful woman. And I can see she has a beautiful face and a beautiful body. And men have used her over and over and over again. They have dishonored her. They have disrespected her. They've used her for sex. They used her for drugs. Her mother, her own flesh and blood, betrayed her. Come out, devil. There he is. Come out right now. There he is. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go oh, in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of there. Rejection, come out. Rejection, come out. Lust, come out. Go oh, in Jesus' name. Every ugly man, come out now. Every ugly man, come out. Go. Go in Jesus' name. Adultery, drugs, alcohol, oral sex. Come out. Anal sex. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go. Go now. Go now. Go now. You pervert. Come out of it. Perversion. Come out. Right now. Man hater. Man hater. Self hatred. Rejection. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Get out of that body. Get out of that body. Go. 
Chronic adultery. Come out, baby. Oral sex. Come out. Come out here, you lesbian. Go. Come out. Come out. You pervert. Come out. Come out, you pervert. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go. I said out. Out. Now listen, you don't have depression. No, that's a spirit. He gave it to you. There's nothing wrong with you. It was all a trick. You get out of my body right now, you pervert. Come out of my vagina. Mother, come out of me now. It was all a trick. Come out of here. It was all a lie. 50 years of life. He lied. 70 years. All a lie. There's nothing wrong with you. He gave it to you. Nothing. It was all a hoax. You pervert. I want you out of my stomach right now. Come out of my room. It won't come out. There's something. Hey, hey, it's a lie. It won't come out because you think you're sick. Repent of it. You get out of my body right now. Every husband, all three of them, they all cheated on me. Come out of me right now. Cheaters. Cheaters. Cheater. Come out. It's all a lie. I'm not sick. Get out of me. Come out. Come out. Crystal mess. Come out right now. Get out of the body right now. I am not sick. That's a lie. Get out. I said I'm not sick. Come out right now. Go. She picked up a demon in a health food store. She was using a pendulum to pick out her vitamins, and that new age demon jumped in. Get out of there! Go! Go! Come out! Go! Go! Come out. Get out. And go. Go right now. I said I hate your guts. Did you hear me? You get out of my head. You get out of my head. You come out of my childhood. You come out of my mind. You leave my head right now. Go. Right now, every negative thought, every every negative thought, every lie, every fabrication, come out of me right now. You get out of my life right the second. I command you to go. You stinking demon. I'm not serving you one more day. <coughs> Never. Come out right now. Get out of my spine. <laughs> go now. Go now. Get out of my body right now. The demon that tells me to eat for comfort. Food demon. Obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, come out. Diabetes, come out. Right now. Get out. Get out of there. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Come out right now. Satan, I command you to come out of this family. Satan, come out in Jesus' name. No, you tell him like you know. There you go. Come out now. Kathy, get out of me. I am not coming down with cancer because some woman stole my wife. It's not worth it. Come out now. I'm releasing negativity right the second. I repent of it. Go. Go now. Go. Get out of my body. Come out of my body. I come in because has a result of pain, heart pain in the liver. Strong. You know, but right now, much better. There's a problem with the liver. I don't know. Do you used to drink a lot? Oh, no. If you, uh, were you ever in uh, witchcraft or Catholicism or New Age or anything like that? That started a week ago? Yeah. Now, yeah, is there any way you could have picked bad, up? Bad. Months ago, 
I want you to heal this lip. Yes. Come. Heal. Come on. There it is. There it comes. Come on. There it comes. Come on, that liver right now. Go. There he comes. There he goes. Go. Go. Come on. Liver, I command you, heal. Uh, how'd that go? How'd that go? Yeah. You feel good doing that? Yeah. There's a demon in her body that tells her to eat when she gets stressed out. He's trying to give her diabetes and high blood pressure. Out. Satan, come out. Liver, be healed. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Go! Fear, go! She has a fornication, abortion. Um, she wants to divorce her husband because she says she's no longer in love with him. Oh, how old are you, honey? Forty. You're forty. Oh, you're beautiful. You look like you're twenty. Thank you. When you was a little kid, did somebody hurt you real bad? No. How about as a, how many times you married? Two. The first oh, husband. You had it right. <laughs> the first husband was you were how old? Child. What did he used to beat on you? No, verbally? On my face. Verbally. Uh, verbally. Uh, verbally. Yeah, what was like his mental. name? What was his name? Perry. Perry. Perry with a P? Yeah. Okay. Where's he at now? He's in Georgia, but he got married. Yeah, remember, okay. Raise your hand. And Father God, uh, the devil tricked this woman into marrying Perry when she was young. She did not know he had demons. And some of his demons transferred into her. And Perry needs to be forgiven and removed from her. He put fear spirits in her. And now they told her to marry another guy she wasn't supposed to marry. And now she wants to leave the second one because she doesn't love him. <laughs> now she's embarrassed to keep praying because I'm mentioning what's wrong here. These demons are making a fool out of this beautiful woman. And now they have another man lined up for her waiting to replace her current husband. He won't work out either. Because Perry, Perry is still in there. And Perry is going to come out tonight. Did you hear me praying? Yes. It's Perry. Perry? Yeah, okay. he transferred in. And he brought in that demon, brought in your second husband. Okay. Now they're going to get rid of the second husband and bring in a third loser. Okay. And it's going to go on and on and on. And she's going to have a miserable life if she doesn't get Perry's demons out of her. She may not have totally and completely forgiven him. So check that out, okay? Spirits transfer into somebody whenever you have intercourse with them. They transfer over. But I think Perry was more, more a victim than... He was a victim from who? From me. Okay. Where did you get the demon? You transferred him into him? You abused no. him? I mean, we're both fighting. We're both right. Fighting. But it's not like that I was a saint either, you know? You weren't what? I was, it's not like that I was a saint. Oh, no, you weren't a saint, not at all. You know? You were, you were tricked into marrying him. He was tricked into marrying you. So the demons destroyed both of them. There's so too many things going on. Yeah, it's all demonic. Yes, it None is. of it is God. For someone that started off going to church for a young age, you know, and knew it all. 
and all this happened while I knew the Lord. Yeah, I know. That's a, that's why it happened. You knew the Lord. And especially this marriage that I am right now, I was more closer to the Lord as I would never before in my life. Uh -huh. and, and then it still happened because of yeah. us. See, you hearing this? Perfect. Wouldn't you do that if you were a demon? What? Wouldn't you do that if you were a demon? Like what? Like what they did to you. I mean, they're, they're mean, right? They don't what? like us. <laughs> no, but wouldn't they? If the demons saw her close to the Lord, wouldn't they do oh, something to stop it? Yeah. Yes, they would. Yeah. Wouldn't they send her a husband who's yes. no good for her? Yes. Wouldn't they send her a second one? Yes. Aren't they going to send her a third dream, one? Yes. My, my dream was to be with a man that we worship together uh -huh. and to go to church together, do the work of the Lord together. Uh -huh. And now, and now, but you chose the one they sent. Okay. And I'm, so, I'm leaving on regrets. Now. You're leaving what? Regret. And regrets. Regrets. Okay. Good. Uh, I think I came more for this. Okay. Yeah. For here, right here. Okay. Uh, now this is to be delivered from uh -huh. whatever that's going on over here. Yeah, I know what it is. Now what happened was she picked up all these demons from the first husband, then picked up demons from the second husband. Mm -hmm. Now they're catching up with her. Yes. Now they're giving her that. Yes. They're going to give her other things. Yes. I can actually feel it. No, that's him. He's yes. doing it. Yeah. See. And he's trying to get her to keep talking and not yes. listen to me. Yes, that's what he's doing to me right there. He doesn't want her to listen. Yes. Because he is smarter than she is. Yes. Way smarter. Yes. He's smarter than I am. Way smarter. Okay? So what you have to do with this kind of a person is she's a good, she's got a good heart. She loves the Lord. Yes. But she's very confused. Yes. She doesn't understand the spirit world and how it operates. Yes. So, because they knew she had a good heart, they targeted her for termination. So, the demons are matchmakers. They know exactly who to send to you that will ruin your spiritual. Yes. So, you, so what? Well, yeah, the second husband's not the issue. It's, it's it's what happened to her way before that. The spirits yes. have transferred in here. Now he's moving up here. Yes. What he's That's trying to what he's trying to do. Can you both pray for me? Uh, we can pray for you, but we want it to be effective. So that's why I'm trying to explain what's wrong. Okay. So, because the Bible says my God's people perish for lack of knowledge. Yes. And she she doesn't have a lot of knowledge. She doesn't know what's going on. So I'm trying to help her see kind of behind the curtain. Oh my God, that's what happened to me. I didn't know that. So the first, you got you to gotta go back in the beginning and stages. Perry's demons have to come out first. And he has to be completely blessed and forgiven and prayed for by her before we can get the rest of them. Because he was my first sexual relationship with my first husband. Because well, he I was both, started, right? I, no. no I, I started, started way before. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she picked up demons before she ever got married. And he probably did too. She said she got paid for it. She what? For some sex. She got paid for it. She got what? Paid for sex. Oh, but prostitution. Movie. Yeah. So those are spirits that transfer. Those are spirits that transfer in. Did you hear that demon say that to her? You hear that? He's been mad at me. He's been her demon. The whole time. Did you hear that? Yeah. Her demon just told me to go pray for her. Yeah. So I tell you what. No. I didn't say that. no. I said, yeah, you she did. Wants she said she wants to talk to you. Did you hear her say that? That was not her. That was him in there. He said, hey, this guy's getting too close to my dinner. Yes, he is. So I got to get rid of this dude. I to get a Beatles. Yeah. She, I want to. She wants to hear, but she doesn't want to hear. See yes. how she's smiling? Yes. So this girl here is going to take a while to get yes. the demons out, okay? Because she has to renew her mind. Yes. So what I try to do with this kind of a person here is start at the beginning. So the beginning is her first adultery experiences is when she first picked up the initial spirits, okay? So she's, she doesn't have any godly sorrow over that and doesn't want to get those demons out. We're going to be in bad trouble. So I would start there. That's where you got to start. Go back to the beginning. 
get out of this body. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Go off I feel amazing. Thank you so very much. I made you talk to you for a minute. Okay. Now, I want you to listen to me. You're going to get hit within 48 hours of this service. You live alone. Who do you live with? My fiance. But now uh, he's going to act squirrely. Okay. Okay. So, do you have anywhere to go? Do you have anything? Who is this guy? He's very spiritual. He is spiritually yoked. He is. He is. He was actually going to come here tonight. No. But he had to work. Okay. But the problem is, he's loaded. He was sleeping with you. Yes. Okay. So, he's in deep trouble. If you go back to him, the stuff that came out here. We'll get back in. Well, I'm not doing anything like that now, anymore. But I, I, in the I next don't. 48 hours, they're going to hit you. Because they had you, but they had you in the bag, and you were going to hell. They yes, had you in the bag. Absolutely. They lost you tonight, and they don't just sit there and go, "Oh well." No, they're going to come back. So your fiance and who's the other close person to you? My children. But, they live but, with you? Yes, but one just actually was here tonight. The one, he, he's, he went outside with, but my, um, but, um, the guy um, that works on your team, because first the girl talked to him and tried to pray for him, and he was scared. But he's the reason why I came here originally, is because he's very angry. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, can you come back here yes. next Thursday, Absolutely. Friday for, for like a month Absolutely. so we can get everything Absolutely. out? Absolutely. Because you're going to get hit from every angle when you leave here. Okay. Who else lives in your house? My uh, <laughs> very negative people. Our roommates are you have very anybody, negative. Do you have anywhere you can go for like two days and hide? I no, but I am. Well, here's the, here's the real trigger, though. Is I am moving out Who's away I? from. I am. I am. Just I, you. And me and my children are. Yes. How many children are there? Just two. The angry one. And the angry one. And, my and then other the other one, one is what? She's also becoming very angry. Like yeah, I've okay. noticed. So what you're doing is you're living in a nest of demons. You live in a nest of them. So they'll use those three people to come in. I've noticed a lot lately. They'll attack you. Okay? I've noticed it a lot lately since I've been trying to make little they, positive changes. They saw that. And they're trying to stop you. When are you moving? Um, the day after tomorrow. Okay. So you can be your next Thursday. Yes. Right? Okay. Absolutely. And then ask Kelly Kelly to pray for you next Thursday. Kelly, okay. 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 Right. okay. okay. All right. All right. I love you. Thank you. Hi. How are you? What you said when you walked up, I don't know if you remember, but you said you said something about men chasing me. You spoke prophetically. Look at this. This man, I was on the canal by myself, okay? Hold on. I took a bunch of pictures from a video. Okay? Those are all pictures from a video. This guy came walking right up to me and would keep, keep go like this. Like this. With Dan, you know Dan, he's like 62, Roger, you know, Dan, he's older. And uh, my two big dogs. Eight or 13 times, he kept doing that and doing that. We kept calling, we called the police. But that's what he keeps doing. No matter where he's standing, he stops and turns down. Even this close. Nothing stopped him. I mean, and he just spoke that. This was, I think, last It's like a beacon. Go, next time. Go. Go. Hi. 
Yeah, yeah lost demons are around you. You must have been doing something in your past that drew them in. No. Were you promiscuous when you were younger? Yeah. When I was in my 20s, I was raped. Huh? I was raped. I was raped. Virgin with fire. Fire. You were raped at 14, and yeah. then you were promiscuous well, after that? I was like maybe 13. Lots of guys after yeah. that? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, for, well, for a few years. Yeah, then you quit. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. The demons are, they, 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 uh, they uh, leave the war. Yeah. But yeah. I passed all oh, that out. I'm here. I, I know hear. that. Yeah. They hang around. They hang out here. And they pull in. I can't start like all No, they're out here. They're already cast out. They're out here. So what do I do? They they said they have a sense that if they keep trying, you'll give in. To what? So whatever they want. So they're bringing uh, fear, could be fear, lust, anger, uh, hate, different things. I have, I have no sex drive. I haven't had exhaustion. Three years. I was injured. I had a hysterectomy back in 99 or 98. 1999 or 1998. Okay. So and I just, I don't even have Did that guy scare you? Huh? Oh my God! Yeah, yeah because, it's a bingo. Go, 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 go! Nothing, go in nothing the name of Jesus. The That's it. Go in the name of Jesus. No, hey, it's not go him. Yeah, he's infected. Yeah, big That's time. A, this is a whack out. No, they're do that. Now we know what it is. It's not lust. It's fear. That's it. The demons think. The demons think it's fear. Thank you. They're and drawing them in to scare you. you they're they're you. calling, yeah. They're calling you to scare you. Like, call me back? Yeah. Please, Fear. I don't know. Hey, she needs yes? her gift of thumbs. Did you get that pendulum out of there? I don't know. I got something out. You did? I had a yeah. girl. <laughs> <laughs> Proud of you. Don't, don't need to. You don't have your gift, your gift of tongues? I don't have it. Okay, good. now, in order to get your gift of tongues, you got to be able to relax. <laughs> Okay. Which is kind of hard for you. Right now. Well, yeah, I'm serious. You know, <laughs> you gotta. And then you just kind of whisper after me. Okay. What you're saying, I say. Is that correct? Yeah. Just kind of relax okay. and. Bushaba. Bushaba. Velocity. Velocity. Menoma. Menoma. <laughs> Couldn't have been any better. <laughs> yeah, I was just Perfect. You. Yeah, I know. Well, that's why I said. Oh, okay. That's what I said. <laughs> Come out, fear. Uh, yeah. Fear of man. Yes. All earthly okay. things go and just start speaking to God. Now, you just listen to me again. Okay. Okay? Yes. Listen to me again. Okay. But this time you add some syllables on your own. Okay, just any syllable. And if there's no wrong answer. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Come out. Come Go. Okay. Go. Okay. I think that was it. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Fear. Fear. Oh. Fear. Oh. Fear. Fear. Oh. 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 Good, good, good. Good girl, perfect. Thank you, Jesus. Good girl, perfect. Any syllable. Good girl, perfect. Go, keep going. You ever heard gift, Lord? You ever heard gift, Lord? Good girl, perfect. Any syllable. Good, perfect, just like that. Perfect, keep going. Good girl, perfect. They're drawn in men for fear. You got it. Hey, so what are you doing? Put your hands back up. Come up here. Any syllable. Come up here. In your mind, you just tell the Lord you love him and keep speaking in tongues. Lord, I love you. 
Keep going. Ten minutes. There's the clock. Ten minutes. I love you. Love you too. How'd you do? I think so. Yeah. How'd it go? Streamers, YouTubers, we've got a testimony for you tonight. This beautiful woman is going to give her testimony of what happened to her tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. I feel lifted. I think Jesus lifted me. I've been down with depression and anxiety, pain in my back and all over my body. Father God, thank you for my wonderful daughter who found Mike to bring me here this evening so I could be helped. Thank you, Jesus, for all of these wonderful people who you brought to help us. And all my love, God, I just want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Her daughter found Brother Mike on the internet and brought her here. She had suffered from nausea, depression, pain for three months. And tonight, that is all lifted. YouTubers, you too can be lifted of depression and heaviness and pain. If you do what she did, she was a willing participant. She was humbled before the Lord. She was desperate. And in her cry of desperation, she reached out and let the power of God deliver her and heal her tonight. He did it. None of us did. He did it. He's the one who has the power to deliver and heal. He and he alone does it. Lord, I'm grateful to you tonight.